that. We have a lot to talk about. You know, a lot of changes are being made. A lot of new players, a lot of players leaving. Where should we start? I mean, I know we have a lot of returners, like Mm -hmm. we were talking about earlier. But like you said, we also did lose quite a few guys that were some really big um, playmakers for us. So I really do think that we'll be able to hold our own. I mean, with the guys that are coming back, we got Dominic Richardson, Mm -hmm. the running back. I think he's really going to be able to step into that role of Mm -hmm. just, you know, like how Jalen Warren was such a playmaker for us. I think that Richardson really can just kind of take that role Mm -hmm. and kind of just show us what he has. I mean, show us what he's made of. I agree. Um, And obviously, Jaden Nixon, um, he's also going to be someone to watch, I think, throughout the whole game. Yeah. Um, Just for those kind of like third down plays maybe, just kind mm-hmm. of throw them in there every now and then. But mm-hmm. I really do think Richardson is going to be taking on the brunt of all of the Lord. plays for yeah. sure. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I think it will look pretty good on the running back side of things. I agree with you. And I've I've saw, too, Richardson and Nixon especially in the run game. I think that they're going to be two really key aspects to our team. And I think that they're really going to kind of push us down that field and hopefully get us some touchdowns. You know, yes. I heard Hunter Woodard is going to be another good guard to help us out on that right side. Caleb Batine will be solid. I know that he oh, yeah. is dominant on that field. For so sure. I think in that tackle, he's going to really help us out. Um, but like you said, Spencer Sanders, you know, this is mm-hmm. his fourth year. This is, I think this is going to be his last year, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. <laughs> like, he, I know he redshirted and now he's a redshirt senior, I believe. So, yeah, I think that that's going to be a big loss for us. But we yes. don't need to talk about that right now. Right. We need to talk <laughs> about this season. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, so Sanders, what, what are you thinking? I mean – you know, I know he gets a little bit of a bad rap sometimes just with, like, <laughs> you know, the Baylor game performance and the yeah. championship, anything like that. But, I mean, like, if you really think about it, he won first team All-Big 12. Mm-hmm. Um, he had 2,800 yards last season. Like, that's that's a lot. That's pretty solid. He threw yeah. for 20 touchdowns, had 644 rushing yards mm-hmm. and six rushing scores. Yeah. Um, and just with him coming back this year, I really do think that, you know, he has a lot to prove, but at the same time, like, he's been proving it, you know? Yeah. Like, I just feel like he's going to be able to kind of take this season and just show everyone, like, go out with a bang. Mm-hmm. Like, this is what I'm made of. Like, yeah. kind of prove all the doubters wrong. I think so, you know? too. So, I think so, too. And obviously, he's been a key player. He will yes. continue to be that key player for us. He's the quarterback. He's the playmaker, right. you know? And so, he obviously is also, excuse me, a big <laughs> runner. He is yes. loving that run game, and he, he is very good at it. Mm-hmm. Um I do think he can get himself into trouble a little bit with that sometimes, yeah. but that's my personal opinion, and I am not the coach, so I cannot comment too right. much. But I think that that is going to be his key, and that's going to kind of be what helps us out, especially in these early games, is him knowing and seeing those pockets and saying, For like, sure. I don't know yet mm-hmm. how this is going to pan out. I'm just going to do it myself, and I yeah. think that's going to be really helpful in those situations where potentially maybe some new guys or some guys coming in like off the bench are kind of just – they're getting into it. They're not right. there yet, you know? Right. So I think he'll be able to kind of mm-hmm. take that upon himself, especially the first couple of games while everyone's kind of figuring everything mm-hmm. out. Um, yeah. And, you know, with that leadership position like we were talking about, he does really like to take that on himself and, yeah. you know, make those rushing touchdowns and run through that pocket um, whenever he can find it. Yeah. So I'm really excited to see what he does, though, especially today too. against this pretty solid Central Michigan t- team. So. I am too. I know in regards to leadership, Dominic Richardson, let's start talking about him yeah. again. He is running back. He's amazing. He's been a standout for OSU. And so last year he played in 20 – or not last year. He played in 21 games his whole time at OSU, okay. all 14 games this past season. Nice. Obviously that was very influential for us. Yes. Um, so, yeah, how do you think he's going to come out today? I mean, he obviously – played behind Warren Mm -hmm. um, a little bit last year, but I definitely see him kind of stepping into the primary role as a leader um, next to Sanders, especially with tonight's game, um, DeAndre Jackson. Mm -hmm. He's out with some transcript issues, um, being a transfer from A&M, and I just think that, you know, Richardson's really going to take advantage of that um, and kind of, I don't know, just – like last season, he finished with 79 carries, 373 rushing yards, four rushing touchdowns. Yeah. And those numbers aren't anything, you know, absolutely crazy. Um, but I really do think that it kind of foreshadows a little bit of what mm-hmm. we can expect um, from him this season, just mm-hmm. with having that primary role, stepping into it. I agree. And something special about him, as well as Brendan Presley, are, is the special teams aspect that they can mm-hmm. have, you know? I think a lot of guys are kind of limited to their position. Yes. And the fact that they can go and they can play multiple different ways of that field I think is going to be very 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 helpful to him in the long run and for us this year so I'm curious to see how that goes yeah tell me you said Brennan Presley you know yes tell me a little bit more about what you see him doing this season 
dominating yeah. is the only way. <laughs> yeah, is the literally. only way. Like literally. I remember last year just sitting back at the games and just being like, oh my goodness. Like, like this kid he is, is insane. insane. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. And his brother, like you mentioned, is mm -hmm. here finally this year from Bixby. He's going to be a true freshman. Yes. So I'm really curious how he does. I, I've heard there's been talk of him trying to steal his brother's spot, uh -huh. you know. Sibling rivalry. I have it with my sisters too. Right. But yeah, so he was in every game last year, Brennan, mm -hmm. with 11 starts, and he finished as OSU's second leading receiver in terms of receptions, yards, and touchdowns. He went 50 catches for 100 and, or not 100, excuse me, <laughs> 619 yards with five scores. Dang. And so, like we said with Dominic Richardson, he will also be on that special teams. So I right. think we brought it up a little bit earlier, his return in the OU game. Mm -hmm. Um, insane and yeah, completely literally. insane, and He's I think that was like a really big deal for us, and that's mm -hmm. kind of that's kind of what got those wheels turning. Exactly, you know? and I can see him doing a lot of those big, big yeah. plays this season, just with the schedule that we have, and just him again taking on that other leadership role, mm -hmm. just alongside Sanders and Richardson, like mm -hmm. really just stepping into it, taking it. Taking it and running with it, like yeah. I, I think he's a star. Like he's he's gonna kill it this year. I'm really excited. To I see know what he does. I do too. And I think that what's kind of um, like an ongoing trend with that, a lot of the guys on this team, especially these three key players that we've been looking at to, um, today, is that they're leaders. You mm -hmm. know, they've all been here. They're all obviously. Sanders, we said, was a leader. Obviously, Brennan Presley was a leader. But they lead each other by example. They're not right. the kind of guys where you're going to be out there hearing them yell and scream at each other, you're doing it wrong, mm -hmm. you need to do better, you know. Gundy had said in a press conference, Sanders is the last one to leave that field. Like, he is up there picking up his brothers, and he's saying, like, hey, you don't know how to do this, let me help you. Same, I'm sure, with both of these other guys. Right. And I think that that's really influential because, you know, if you're out on a team, like, in a big game like this, on this big field, it's like you're on stage. And, yeah. like, if you crumble, like... That can be humiliating for someone, and not even to say that that's what's going to happen, right. but it's it can be hard, and it's these guys are under a lot of pressure, mm -hmm. and that next step that they're planning on taking is an even bigger stage, and if they can't do it in this one, they have to, they're not going to be able to last out there, and so I think that that building up and that helping out and the, you know, just that, like, support is really going to be what kind of separates them from the rest of the pack, just because I feel like a lot of teams, just through the grapevine and, you know, what I've heard is that it can be kind of a dog-eat-dog. Dog. And when you're mm -hmm. on a team, that's brutal. Like, that's not something that, that you really want to deal yeah, with. Yeah, for sure. But, yeah, so I, I'm really excited to see how they go. I know they're going to stand out. So, yes. yeah. It's um, going to be awesome. Okay, Braylon, let's talk about him. You know yes. some players to watch. He's one of them. True freshman from Bixby. Brother is Brennan. Mm -hmm. I I don't know how it's going to go. I mean, I I've heard either. he's been great in high school, but right. this isn't high school. It's a whole different game. I yeah. mean, it's – there's just, you know, you might be fast and big in high school, but mm -hmm. it's just once you get on that field with everyone else, they're way faster than you, way bigger than you. Yeah. It's like, okay, this is real now, you know? Yeah. Um, so I can definitely see him, if he does, end up getting to play very much this season. Um, mm -hmm. Just kind of stepping into that role. Kind of like Brennan, you know, he's fast, obviously, um, smart, and just knows, knows football, you know? So I can yeah. definitely see him kind of being smart with plays, um, even if he doesn't get to be in a whole lot this season like for a whole lot of plays mm -hmm. I do think that with the ones he does get he'll be able to be able to take it and run with it I mean yeah. just be a really a really good guy to depend on if we need to throw him in there yeah so. I agree and I know he was a four-star prospect from multiple different um yes. sites ESPN 24 7 sports both mm -hmm. said like he is he's, he's solid <laughs> he's so you good. know I think I don't think Gundy has ever failed us in the recruiting aspect right. I don't think OSU has failed us really so I think that I think that we're solid. I just think that it's up to him now to kind of take Prove on that, yeah, bit. take on that job and mm -hmm. just be like, okay, I need to get to it. Exactly. Um, next up, we have Taylor Shetron, um, true freshman once again from Edmond, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. I don't know too much about him. What What do you know? I mean, I also don't know a whole lot about him. I mean, uh -huh. like you said, he's a true freshman, but I have heard some things just. Um, you know, he's, I've heard he's fast. Obviously, yeah. you got to be pretty fast to be yeah. a receiver, but he's fast. He's quick on his feet, knows how to move the ball well. Um, and I think he could get a couple targets this year, honestly. Yeah. Like we said, you know, Brennan's going to be the main receiver. We got John Paul Richardson um, in there. He's coming back as a sophomore, mm -hmm. and he had quite a few targets last year mm -hmm. um, and was able to execute, ex sorry, excuse me, <laughs> execute some plays really well last year. So yeah. I think. Um, just alongside of them, Talon's going to be really, 
honestly a really solid guy to just, you know, in those kind of instances where, you know, Brennan's being covered by the other number one, you know, cornerback on the other team or something. Mm -hmm. um, I think he'll be a good guy to be able to look to and kind of depend on just to catch the ball and make a play, honestly. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, no, I agree. But speaking of John Paul Richardson, mm -hmm. let's talk about him too. You know, he's a sophomore. He's the oldest yes. of this group on the players to watch list. But he was a dominant. He was a dominant force. He played in 10 games last year. You know, he made 23 catches for 168 yards and two touchdowns. Although that might not sound like a lot, like that's a big deal for someone with, as a freshman, you know? Yes. Like he was a freshman that year and he still went out and did that against guys who are what, four years older than Literally him? Literally four or like, five even. Like, like yeah, <laughs> I don't know. But I'm excited to see, I'm excited to see him on the field today. And I'm really excited to see kind of what he does and how he falls into the lineup. Yeah. I think that he's going to be really strong, but I think that just because he's on the younger side of the team, I think that he might kind of be a little bit, not, I don't think he will be, but I think they might choose to hold him back for a little bit and then send him in maybe a little bit later into the right. game just so we can get settled on things. I agree. Yeah. For sure. And uh, I'm excited to see how, you know, Central Michigan's Lou Nichols running back mm -hmm. plays. I am too. He I know. finished I last too. season with 1,800 yards, led the nation and carries – Really solid guy, so I'm really, really excited to see how he matches up against our defense and everything this, yeah. this game. I think they're both going to be great offenses, but, you know, let's send it over to Connor once again. Um, Connor, what do you have for us? I know that's hard for you to tell me. <laughs> Dylan, Emma, the, the rain's starting to line up right now, so we're getting in better conditions as we're getting closer to tip off. And also, I want to be able to mention that last tailgate we were just at, that was the tailgating champions for OSU in Bedlam. They were the best ones. That tailgate's been there for 37 years. They have not missed one game. While we're at the tailgates, let's get closer over to the stadium here. And I got a family that's made the drive, eight hours in particular. Let's go down the list here. Let's get everybody's names. I'm Mike. I'm Kelly. Tiffany. Addison. And Bobby. Well, guys, you made the drive from Fort Worth. So what are we out here for? Eight hours. That's a long drive. That's a lot of family time together. What's going on here? Our oldest daughter is a freshman in the band. It's her first football game with OSU band, and it's really exciting for the family. So have you guys been OSU fans to begin with or early on, or is this now a new, uh, a new thing for everyone? This is a new thing. Oh, okay, okay. We're breaking it in today. That's awesome. Yeah, Oh, TCU. They did, they did it. How difficult was that to make that change? It, it was hard, but hey, go Pokes. I did it. Whoa, and with the purple visors. Groundbreaking stuff here on the pregame show. Okay, everybody, I want to start being able to get some projection, pre predictions, part of my English, about this first game. I know you're brand new here, but we got to get predictions of what we think is going to happen. Uh, Pokes by 10. Okay, okay, by 10? By... Ten. Ten? Uh, all right, all right. We're, keep, we're keeping on a consistent number. I'm saying it's a total smash down, 21 Ooh. to nothing. Ooh. I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's a great answer. 42 to 6. Good. Okay, because there's a little bit of history behind this right now for the Central Michigan game. About the, f the final five seconds in the game, the interception that happened. So there's a little bit of bad blood to this. So this is actually a great first game for you guys to be a part of. So what's been the atmosphere like for you guys so far when you're here? Oh, it's been great. This uh, is amazing. Yeah, everybody's amazing. so nice. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a part of the action. We got people back there as well. Everybody's loving it up. Dylan, Emma, sending it right back to you. Connor, I love the energy, you know, man. <laughs> like, it is great. These guys are having fun out there. Both of the groups that you've been with so far seem awesome, and they seem into, and they're ready for some Cowboy football. But before we leave for a break, please come back to the pregame show. We're going to be breaking down the defense. It's going to be some great stuff. So we'll see you after the break. Pecans are staple to Oklahoma. In fact, many of our native pecans come from trees that are older than Oklahoma statehood. My father's the one that got us started into the pecan picking. I was probably 10 or 12 years old, and we started off with the one little mechanical picker that you pulled behind a four-wheeler. Then we'd go home at night and we'd clean them on a TV tray. I guess uh, watching my dad work hard when we were young, and people started trusting him and getting more and more groves, uh, we just kept growing. Being a, a relatively new and fresh company, we get to sit in the same room with people who have been a part of the Oklahoma economy for decades. It's opened a lot of doors. It's gave us uh, quite a bit of exposure, and I think people, you know, will take a small company like us a little more serious. We're just going to continue growing as long as our community lets us and uh, our customers keep on buying, and we'll see where it takes us. <laughs> We would design something, it was set on the counter, and people was either, if enough of them said, you know, this just is 
This isn't it. It never made to the line. Dad was excited that they're all original. They were all designed on mom's kitchen table and it gets in your blood after a while. We're very happy that Pamela and Michael have taken over the business and kept the family going. We took the business over in 2017. When we found that it was available, we wanted to keep the legacy of family alive, but it was also incredible products that deserve to be uh, a part of Made in Oklahoma's story. We were a part of Made in Oklahoma years ago, and so it kind of grew as Made in Oklahoma grew. Oklahoma is ingrained into our, everything that we did. We've been here most of our life. That's what we entailed our whole business on, was the Oklahoma homegrown feeling. Hi, welcome back to the pregame show. Okay, you guys, finally, Emma, you know what time it is? Oh, yeah. Defense. Here we go. Um, okay, OSU, let's kick it off. Obviously, we were we were awesome Stellar. last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, um, fifth, fifth ranked nationally. Um, right. I don't think that, I don't think any other team was um, four sacks average per game. You know, I think that was also another dominant thing we yeah, had. Yeah, for sure. Um, there's a lot to talk about with our defense. Yes. What, what do you want to start with? I mean, going to start with obvious, you know, we lost our coordinator, yeah. Jim Knowles, um, and got replaced with Derek Mason, who mm -hmm. honestly I think is a really, really good fit yeah. um, for this defense. You know, he has a lot to work with coming mm -hmm. off of last season. Obviously, we did lose a couple players, but mm -hmm. I know that there are a lot of guys returning that are really hungry um, to carry on what the defense started last year. Yeah. And, like, literally they only allowed – our defense last year only allowed 297 total yards a game, like, yeah. on average. That's, like, an insane stat, you know. Yeah. And, like, if you compare it to Central Michigan, they gave up 297 passing yards. Like, not total yards, but passing yards. Yeah. So I'm like, just that stat alone, like, in comparison, just kind of shows how dominant our defense was last season. Uh -huh. And I really do think that, you know, we can carry that over again. Um, we were number one in the nation in sacks, second in tackles for loss, um, and led the Big 12 in, like, basically all of the major defensive categories. Mm -hmm. um, so I really do see that kind of continuing this season, honestly. You know, there's going to be changes. There's going to be different guys stepping up to fill those roles that are left from the guys that left. But I really do think that we can kind of continue with the with the legacy they started last year. So. I think so, too. And I think that because of the season we had last year, we have a lot to prove this yes. year. You know, we're going to be we're going to be a, a force to be reckoned with no matter what. But I think that last year really kind of put us up on this like different standard mm -hmm. where it's like, OK, they're a defense team. And if we don't kind of bring that same fire and that same energy yeah. into it this season, I think that that's going to be not something that's super awesome for uh -huh. us. And so I think that I, Derek Mason is going to be awesome. I think that what he did at Vanderbilt and what he did at Auburn, excuse me, is going to be very influential in moving forward with our program. But I think that he also has a lot to prove. You know, he's new. And coming off the season we have last year with Jim Knowles and everything that he has right. been doing and been into, I think it's going to be kind of a tough spot to take over, and I think it's going to be kind of like a challenge for these guys to trust him, you know, because yeah. they had this guy who literally led them to be number one in the nation in sacks, like you said, second in tackles, mm -hmm. led the Big 12. All, all these stats we've listed now, but it's not just about the stats. Like, it's about the community, and it's about right. that teamwork. And I think that what they do a good job of, like we've talked about multiple times in this show, is just that coming together and mm -hmm. that um, Like the cowboy support. culture. Exactly, yes, yes, yes. That yes, yes. talks about. And I think that that's going to be really important for this season just because of those key players that we lost. Um, but we do have some key players back. You oh, yeah. know, Trace Ford back from his knee injury. Mm -hmm. He's healthy now. I think we're going to see a lot out of him today and a lot of, out of him this season. I agree. And, you know, we have Tyler Lacey and Brock Martin both coming back too. Mm -hmm. Those guys were, like, just Dominant. the absolute, like, it was just insane. <laughs> they're like, the GOAT. They're, like, literally the GOAT. <laughs> but I'm just really excited to see what they do. I mean, they – they return combining for 12 and a half sacks. Like, that's their big stat in our defense alone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have Jason Taylor. He's a good returner as well. Mm -hmm. um, Jabbar Muhammad is at corner this year. Mm -hmm. um, and I've heard a lot of good things about him, just how he's looked over this spring um, and just the way that he's been playing recently kind of just shows a shift from last year to this year. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really excited to see how he performs this year mm -hmm. too um, on defense and everything like that. Yeah, so. and I think something that we really I – made, I made sure to make a note of this is that we need to continue searching for and making those big plays. I think yes. that – 
we had a lot, a lot, a lot of insanely big plays last mm-hmm. year. You know, like we had a field goal kick stop. Like we had a lot of interception. Uh, yeah, a lot of interception. Yeah. Just a lot out of Malcolm Rodriguez alone. Like he was that leader for that mm-hmm. defense. And I'm really curious to kind of to see who's going to take over that role. Like he has big shoes to fill. Oh, and yeah. I think that we have a lot of guys that could kind of take that spot. But I'm curious who's going to be the one to actually step up and do it. I am too. I mean, Mm -hmm. like we talked about earlier, Trace Ford's coming back. But I really do see him being, like, a really good guy just stepping in that that role. Or even um, Xavier Benson. Like, he – I don't know. He started at Tech, you know, started Mm -hmm. at Texas Tech. um, Had 57 tackles in his first full season on the field. Like, that's that's, (laughs) that's a pretty solid stat. Um, He did – sit out the 2020 campaign um but literally like we said just coming back with 57 tackles like that's that's something to build off of for sure so I can definitely see him also being one of the guys that kind of steps into that role Mm because it's really big shoes to fill like we were talking about Mm -hmm. but I think I think he has the potential to do that for Mm -hmm. sure and like you said he did sit out that 2020 year Mm -hmm. but he was also playing though it's not like he just stopped right he was playing Juco I'm not quite sure where but I know that he was dominant there and Mm -hmm. I think that that's something that can be really humbling for someone but yes. I also think it's something that could kind of be like I was at Tech and now I'm at Juco like what uh-huh. but I think that he has the mentality where he's like this was my plan and now I need to move forward and this is how I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it the right way and mm-hmm. I'm really I'm really kind of having positive energy when it comes towards him because I think that he's going to be someone who really lifts us up and he's going to say like hey man like I grinded this out and like I deserve to be here just as much as you and so like if you think that you can take my spot I won't let you 100% and so I'm curious to see how he kind of turns out in that depth chart and in that roster lineup so um yeah let's talk about some guys to look out for though um Trace Ford we've talked about him knee injury last season so there's not too much to say Mm -hmm. but um I think he'll bounce back from it yeah I think so too I mean he played in 10 regular season games and he had um a decent amount of like stats with him he had 22 tackles for um I was gonna say something else but I forgot it so never mind but yeah I think I think that he I think that he is a prominent player and I think he um is someone that even though he wasn't there maybe all last season he will kind of still keep that mentality where like yeah I I was out but that didn't set me back you Mm -hmm. know and so I'm, I'm curious to see once again how he fits into everything how he fits into the line and um the depth charts and all that yeah Um, and you know Colin Oliver is also a really big name mm -hmm. to kind of look at Mm -hmm. he was a freshman last year Mm -hmm. he got 2021 unanimous big 12 defensive freshman of the year yeah um voted on by the coaches that's a huge deal um yeah he made the all-america team um he was freshman of the year award finalist Sean Alexander freshman of the year award semi-finalist and second team all big 12 as a true freshman like yeah, that is almost unheard of for a true freshman so also I just I really think he can kind of show us what he's made of mm-hmm. even more this year you know he proved a lot um last year but this year I I can see him doing a lot of things you know just as a defensive end, kind of stepping in there yeah. and taking that role on the defense of the leader. Like, you know, we've talked about all the offensive leaders that we mm-hmm. see, um, you know, and Sanders and Presley. But I do think that Colin Oliver is a sophomore this year. He will definitely kind of step into those shoes and take on that leadership role, just kind of show everyone what he's about. Yeah, I agree. And I think that we can see something similar out of Brock Martin. So why don't we talk about him? 100%. You know, he is a retro senior this year. So mm-hmm. he's been here quite a while. Yes. Um, 50 career games, 22 career starts, which is insane. Um, played in 13 of 14 games last season. And I think that he, although might have not gotten that like same recognition as mm-hmm. Malcolm Rodriguez necessarily, I think that he was another player that was oh, yeah. very standout and very dominant on that field. Um, but, yeah, I think that he is going to be someone that these guys are looking up to. You know, he's been here for a full period now he's yeah. a Richard senior like he this Been is his last year like <laughs> yeah. yeah like he is at the top of his game I hope mm-hmm. because he knows all the plays he's been here he's right. kind of in the routine and so I hope that he can kind of be that guy to similar of how we've been saying is kind of lead by example you know mm-hmm. like some guys I feel like their senior year they're there's these like, new guys coming in fighting for their spot and they don't have as much to fight for potentially but I think that he has a really good mindset and I think that this past year really kind of put him like in a right headspace yes and so I'm hoping that he I'm hoping that he plays 
plays well. And I think that we're going to see a lot of good stuff out of him, especially in today's game, you know. I agree. Mm -hmm. CMU has a very interesting offense. Like, I, I don't know too too much about them. I do know that they beat us in 2016. Yep. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> but I think that's something that we have to look out for is those yeah. key players in their offense and our key players in our defense. And I think it's going to be a tough matchup because I think that – Although they might not be a technically power five school, mm -hmm. I think that they're still going to be a force to be reckoned with. And 100%. I think that they're still going to be someone that we can't just throw under the rug and turn our heads like for. Right. And, you know, we kind of talked touched on it earlier about how they gave up. Um, CMU gave up 297 just passing yards per game, mm -hmm. which was the worst in their conference. Um, and they lost a couple of players this year to either the transfer portal or the draft. You know, we had um, a couple of players at corner and safeties. Um, so I don't know. I think it'll be interesting to see how they kind of come back from those losses mm -hmm. um, and just kind of kind of reset their defense in a way. You know, after the performance last year, it wasn't mm -hmm. exactly the the greatest. Yeah. I, I don't want to, like, dog on them or anything. Yeah. But I don't know. I think that um, it'll definitely – be interesting to see how they kind of come back from that, you know, with the loss of depth and experience with those guys leaving yeah. um, and just coming back and kind of looking, you know, like we've talk talked a lot about leadership. I think they're mm -hmm. going to be looking for those guys to step up yeah. and take those leadership roles. It so. kind of th seems like a, like a theme of mm -hmm. this game, you know, that leadership portion, like 100%. this is the first game of the season. Like this is kind of that defining factor. Like where are we going to take this season? Like, are we going to kind of, get a slow start are we going to kind of have to like fight out of the gate or are we going to be with our heads on straight and we're going to be like okay we're going to go do this thing and we're going to do it right mm -hmm. and so I'm really curious to see how that's going to happen I know that these cowboys they have good hearts and they have good minds and they have very strong um intuition about how games will go and how to play correct but I think that also other teams are kind of coming out mm -hmm. and they're kind of like we have something to take from you mm -hmm. and they're going to try to take that you know I so I think that I think that it's going to be interesting. I it think will. it's going to be interesting for it sure. Will. Battle of the defenses, I think, yeah. might, might come down to this yeah. game because we both have really a lot of key players on offense, mm -hmm. you know, like we touched on earlier. But I do think that it'll come down to, you know, which team can put up a better defense mm -hmm. performance. And I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I do <laughs> feel like, you know, just coming off last year, I feel like that might be OSU. So yeah. it'll be fun to see how it plays out, though, today. I agree. Um, one more key player, Jason Taylor the second. I honestly am not too familiar with him. I didn't I, – I just don't know. I know stats, but I don't know him. Right. And so I'm curious kind of to kind of get more familiar with him in mm -hmm. this in this season. I think that – I know he's a redshirt senior, and I know that he's been playing. He's dominant all For 14 sure. games last season. Obviously, mm -hmm. he's good. Like, we wouldn't um, hesitate with that. But I think right. that he is someone that I think that kind of – similar to Brock Martin, maybe not as much or maybe less. So I, I don't know how to phrase that necessarily, no, but, I got you. um, isn't, isn't brought up as much. He's yeah. kind of just kind of, he does his job and he does it right, but he doesn't get all the glory for mm -hmm. what he does. And so, um, he has a really big play reputation though. Like we said, he did have one really big play last year against Boise state. He was mm -hmm. the one that stopped that field goal. And I think that that's something that's really special about him is that he thrives on those big plays mm -hmm. and, and the so, fact that he made that big play is like exactly it just shows how much effort he's putting in and like playing you know like you said he's been here for a while mm -hmm. he's a senior um but just like with that effort like not very many people can get a field goal stop like that no. and the fact that he did is just like kind of says a lot about him and his character even just the way he plays um on the field so I think like you were saying yeah I think he'll be a good guy to look out for as even though he doesn't get as much of the credit as you know a couple of the other guys might um, mm -hmm. I think it'll be really really good to see how he performs this season too yeah another big play of him I was reading out my notes I had mm -hmm. about his interception against Texas he was the one that got that momentum change like yeah. he was the one that got that interception and he was the one that kind of told the team like look if we're gonna do this we're gonna do this right now and around. they did mm -hmm. and they did and they did that and they got that win and that was insane I remember being in Austin <laughs> and I went crazy like that was insane oh, yeah. I awesome. it was awesome like that will be forever ingrained in my memory oh, that yeah. game because that was For insane sure. and I think that he is someone who can walk away from the last season and that game specifically and just be like wow I'm really making a change for this team yeah and like again leader he is a leader mm -hmm. and whether or not he might be the most vocal leader or the most prominent leader he is still one and I think that he with that humility that he carries himself with is going to be someone that these young guys can really look up to and kind of just be like look I might not be the most boisterous guy on mm -hmm. the field but I'm going to lead by example and because that's what he's doing and look at him now like he's changing those games for sure yeah. I'm excited I'm excited for our defense you know 
just to yeah, see how it all I plays know. out. And I know. I feel like we were kind of getting just, heavy. Yeah, I know. The but leadership there's thing a lot is to important. Talk about. Yeah. yeah. I think it'll be really good to see who really does step up, though. Um, like, mm. we can talk about it as much as we want. But yeah. we won't really know until those guys are out there on the field and are actually working together and seeing how it all actually plays out in the real world mm -hmm. and not just, you know, predictions and stats and everything like that. So. Yeah. Um, before we head out, though, let's talk really, really quickly about some key players on CMU. Yeah. Um, Dante Kemp, sophomore. He's a cornerback. Um, he's their leading um, returning tackler. He had 54 last season. Um, but, yeah, I think that him and as well as Roland Sturkey Sr. Mm -hmm. He's a cornerback as well. I think those are going to be two guys that we really, really, really want to watch out for. Yes. We'll, we'll have to see. Yeah. We'll have to see. Yeah. I don't know. Like I was saying. <laughs> See how it goes in the real game. Exactly, so. exactly. Well, we're going to send it to break, but then when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit of special teams and some more fun stuff. So come back to the pregame show. Pecans are staple to Oklahoma. In fact, many of our native pecans come from trees that are older than Oklahoma statehood. My father's the one that got us started into the pecan picking. I was probably 10 or 12 years old and we started off with the one little mechanical picker that you pulled behind a four-wheeler. Then we'd go home at night and we'd clean them on a TV tray. I guess uh, watching my dad work hard when we were young and people started trusting him and getting more and more groves, uh, we just kept growing. Being a, a relatively new and fresh company, we get to sit in the same room with people who have been a part of the Oklahoma economy for decades. It's opened a lot of doors. It's gave us uh, quite a bit of exposure, and I think people, you know, will take a small company like us a little more serious. We're just going to continue growing as long as our community lets us and uh, our customers keep on buying, and we'll see where it takes us. <laughs> We would design something, it would sit on the counter, and people was either, if enough of them said, you know, this just is, this isn't it, it never made to the line. Dad was excited that they're all original, they were all designed on mom's kitchen table, and it gets in your blood after a while. We're very happy that Pamela and Michael have taken over the business and kept the family going. We took the business over in 2017. When we found that it was available, we wanted to keep the legacy of family alive, but it was also incredible products that deserve to be uh, a part of Made in Oklahoma's story. We were a part of Made in Oklahoma years ago, and so it kind of grew as Made in Oklahoma grew. Oklahoma is ingrained into our everything that we did. We've been here most of our life. That's what we entailed our whole business on was the Oklahoma homegrown feeling. Just special teams. Hey y'all, welcome back to the last little segment of the pregame show, you know, okay, we got a little bit to talk about special teams and yes. then we're gonna move into some fun stuff, buy or sell and some score predictions. So before we get to all that, um, you know, special teams is hard to yeah, talk about pregame, especially preseason. It's there's not too much out there. We yeah. can talk about last season, but I mean, it's there's just nothing left. You know, mm -hmm. like not not too much has happened. But to get into it really quick, the biggest thing I feel like for OSU is going to be kind of that fight between the two kickers. Yes. You know, we have Alex. Um, Alex Hale. Alex Hale and Tanner um, Brown. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and they fought last season. Um, they really kind of were competitive yeah. with that role and eventually uh, Tanner took over and he was that guy he was our guy mm -hmm. and he he did us good he um, is a transfer from Las Vegas mm -hmm. and he I think came in around maybe the earlier side of the season but um, was 36 on 36 on um, point after touchdowns mm -hmm. so field goals and then or not field goals Anyways, um, he <laughs> also handled the kickoff duties and 37 touchbacks on 81 attempts. So, you know, he, he has a, a he, strong rep yeah. behind him. But I think also um, Alex does as well. He was our guy two years ago, I believe. Mm -hmm. And so I think that they both kind of – I think they both are going to be, once again, in that tough fight. And I think it's going to be interesting to see. I think it's going to be a game-by-game -game situation, kind of mm -hmm. who's on, who's off. I agree. But I think that they're going to be really, really important yeah. to I mean, winning these games. A lot of people, like you were talking about earlier, like some people are key players but don't necessarily get all of the credit. And I think that's kind of how kickers are in a way. You know, like 
it can be, you know, 27, 24 at the end of a game mm-hmm. and you're in field goal range. Like, if you don't have a good kicker, you're done for. Like, mm-hmm. you don't have a chance in that game. But if you do, you have a guy that you can trust and yeah. it might tie the game for you to go to overtime. You know, like, yeah. it just really depends on, you know, how much you can trust them. And I do think that Tanner Brown is a guy that we can really trust this season. Mm-hmm. And, you know, with the battle going on between both of them, I think, I don't know. I know Hale struggled a little bit because um, he got injured mm-hmm. and – you know, came back, but then Brown transferred and kind of just took over. Um, but like you were talking about, he did really, really well. And I think that's really something to kind of go off of coming into this season. Like you said, it's hard to kind of tell for sure since we haven't had a whole lot of action with them over the spring and off season and everything. But I do think that, you know, Brown probably is taking that starting position again. Yeah. Um, is going to be someone we you. can really depend on. So I agree. Um, I think – I think kickers are someone that is kind of overlooked until the mm-hmm. lights right on them, and then mm-hmm. if they mess up, it's it's like it's oh all my gosh. on them, you yeah. know. And so I think that that's something that's very hard to handle. That's a lot of pressure being one guy doing a lot of stuff for this one team, maker breaking a lot of games. Mm-hmm. And so I think that part of the reason why Hale might have not performed too well is just because he was hurt, and mm-hmm. so now he's kind of fighting his way back when he knows that there's this guy fighting him. But I think that now he's kind of gone through his his time out where he's like, look. I really got to get this spot back. And so I think that that's going to be, I think that's going to be a great kind of thing for him and for both of them to see. Um, But yeah, so I think, I think special teams is going to be something to really look forward to. Yeah. But I know on both sides that Mm -hmm. um, CMU also has a fabulous kicker, Marshall Meter. So Mm -hmm. I'm curious to see how that's going to go. For sure. But before we kind of end the show, let's Mm -hmm. get into some buy or sell some fun stuff. Yeah. Um, Let's see what we have for us today. Maybe. <laughs> um, well, I can make one up. Yeah, let's let's do um, it. Okay, buy or sell. We're gonna get. Oh, just kidding. Um, okay, bang or bust. OSU defense has five or more sacks. What do you think? Ooh. Okay. Honestly, right off the gate, I'm gonna say bang. I mean, I can I can see it happening. You know, okay. like just with the offensive line that Central Michigan has, I don't think it's anything to really bank on Mm -hmm. in terms of like this like preventing the sacks and everything so I think Mm. I really do think we could we could pull that off I wouldn't be surprised like we talked about earlier we have a lot of those key players stepping up and they're hungry they're ready to play they're ready to make that statement and I really do think that it's it's possible with them so okay interesting I might have to disagree with you on that one you know (laughs) I think this early in the season I think this early out of the gate too Mm -hmm. with um everything that OSU previously has done in the preseason Mm -hmm. um I don't know what you call that part of the season yeah (laughs) um I think that I think I'm gonna kind of be a little bit more conservative I'm gonna say that's a buzz just because we don't know what to expect I think a lot of our I think a lot of our dominant sack players are Mm -hmm. gonna be there but I don't know I don't know how well successful they're just going to be just mm-hmm. yet. And so, yeah, I'm going to say best on that All one. Right. Um, let's see what else we got. Um, OSU defense has two or more turnovers. Um, <laughs> I don't really know. I know, Honestly, that one's tough. I'm going to I'm going to go once again. I'm just going to take the conservative route. I'm mm-hmm. going to say bust. But, you know, I'm curious cuz I don't I, we had a couple last year, but yeah. I mean nothing Nothing too serious that I remember really hurting us that bad. And so I'm going to say that we kind of – I think we're going to be okay. I think I agree with you on that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, just – I don't know. I just don't see that being a really big factor in mm-hmm. this early of a game. Yeah. Um, or, I mean, I guess it could be. I don't know. That's yeah, that's why but, we're doing this. Yeah. So, I don't know. I think – I think it'll definitely be something to look out for, but I don't think it'll be a serious issue for us this game. Yeah, so. I agree. And I think with the the, the way that I anticipate us playing this game, we're going to play a lot a lot more conservative, yes. a lot more safe. And so I don't think that that's as big of a worry that we should have right now. Yeah. Um, okay, I think we got a couple more. Dominic Richardson has 100 rushing yards or more. Go ahead. I, okay, okay. <laughs> I honestly, I'm going to say bang. I I like him. I like him a lot. I think, you know, playing behind Warren last year, it's kind of hard to tell exactly what he was made mm-hmm. of. He did have some of those big plays throughout the season. But I do think he's going to come out here. And, I mean, I could just see him absolutely dominating, um, especially just the offense. You know, it's going to be kind of hard to tell. Um, just – again coming from spring and off season and everything but I do see him coming out and really just making a statement um against this central Michigan team and again just that competition with the other running back Lou Nicholson he Mm -hmm. was really really good and Mm -hmm. led 
you know, Division One football in yards. And yeah. I think that might be something in the back of Richardson's mind of like, okay, like there's some competition here. Like yeah. I, I got to prove myself to him, you know. So what do you, what do you think about it? I'm agree with you. I'm gonna go with the bang. I think that he has a lot to prove, and I think he mm-hmm. knows that. And I think 100 yards is very much in his range. Oh yeah. And so I'm gonna say that with especially Warren being on, and he is kind of taking up that first string spot. Mm-hmm. I'm a, I'm gonna say that he's gonna get it, and I I don't really have much kind of hesitance with that. I think that he is dominant, like we've been talking about all time, all this time. And I think that he is someone that we've been relying on, and someone we will continue to rely on. Mm-hmm. And because he's on the older side of the team, I think that he is kind of be like the go-to right, right. now, especially sure. this early in the season. I think that he's kind of going to be the guy that we're looking for. Mm-hmm. And so just with that being said, I think that it's completely manageable that he gets that. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, got another one. Spencer Sanders throws for 250 yards or more. Uh, <laughs> throws? Um, I believe so. Yeah. I think that he can. I think that, um, I think that he – will get close I don't know necessarily how much over how much under but I think it'll be in that range yeah. so I'm gonna say bang okay yeah for that one I can but yeah I can see that happening too I think you know it might be more all-purpose yards like we talked about earlier mm-hmm. in the show just mm-hmm. how he likes to take the ball and run with it mm-hmm. with himself um because he can count on that and he knows that so mm-hmm. I think I don't know I I don't know about 250 passing I definitely think he'll get there in yeah. all-purpose yards yeah um so we'll have to see how that one plays out. But I can see him coming out strong yeah. and at least reaching that mark in all-purpose yards, if it, if not passing. Yeah. So. I think it's very manageable. I just think it's, one, like you said, one of those things, if he's going to pass, if he's going to run. Mm-hmm. I'm curious. I'm honestly just extremely curious kind of what route he's going to take yeah. this game, you know? Because last year I feel like towards the end of the season he was a runner. Mm-hmm. And I think, that, I think that the passing can kind of help him in some instances, but I also think that sometimes – it can hurt him. It's a little and bit so of a downfall. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm curious to see how that one goes. But I think yeah. we got one last question. Um, okay, yes. Spencer Sanders has less than three turnovers. Ooh. Oof. Okay, <laughs> I want to say I want to say bust, but I <laughs> am a little scared just, you know, after what we saw in the Big 12 championship and just how that all went. Um, I think, I don't know, I think it will definitely be – something to look out for whether mm-hmm. that's good or bad um but I think I don't know I want to say no but I think I'm gonna go with bang I think I think he might have three or more turnovers yeah I'm right there with you girl like <laughs> I I ride and I'll ride or die for this OSU football team mm-hmm. Spencer Sanders not as much okay I'm just gonna yeah. be honest with you guys like I think that he is dominant I think that he's a leader but I do think there's some times where he um might be able to kind of you know, sh- not necessarily share the stage, but I think that there's times where he kind of is thinking like, look, I'm just going to do it myself. And in mm-hmm. reality, he has a whole team to kind of help him right. out. And really quick, score mm-hmm. predictions. Tell me yes. what you got. Okay. Um, you know, I think I heard this was a 22-point spread. Mm-hmm. So I think I'm going to go with 31-21. 31-21. 31-21. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mine's 38-17. So kind of in the same range-ish, okay. but I don't know. We'll have to see. I have to see how it plays out. I think it'll be a really good one to watch. I'm really excited. Yeah, I am too. And we got some good games coming up this oh, weekend. Yeah. You know, first weekend of the season for everyone, Oregon versus Georgia, Notre Dame, Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a couple other ones. Oh, um, Arkansas and Cincinnati, yes. new Big yes. 12 school. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think I think it's going to be a great season. I think we're off to a really good start. But, you know, that wraps mm-hmm. up the pregame show today. Thank you guys all so much for tuning in. Have a great day and go Pokes. I'm Kristen Hawkins. I went to Oklahoma State University here in Stillwater in 99 to 2004. I've always felt like Stillwater needed more family friendly things to do and we have opened up AR Workshop. We do everything from knitting blankets that can be done in a three hour class and we create doormats and porch signs. The Christmas wreaths with our yarn that we use for the blankets. We also do, um, we just started a new project for gnomes and we've done pumpkins during the fall. But our big thing that we do here are interior signs. Our designs are extremely unique to our workshop. Customers come in, it's everything is here for them to do. They create everything. They can be as hands-on as they want. They came in here to relax and have fun and that they are proud of their project that they've made.